the heck is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Kind of Funny X Cast, your home for all things Xbox here at Kind of Funny. I'm one of your show hosts, Snowbike Mike, and today I'm joined by three fabulous human beings, not my gaming dads, but the Kind of Funny Games Games Cast team. We got members from PSI Love You XOXO, and we have my favorite guy, Andy Cortez, as well. Blessing, Greg, Andy, thank you so much for joining us. It's GDC week, and we're going to fill the audience in on the indie games they need to know about because we saw a number of indie titles all throughout GDC week. And I can't wait to talk about it with them because I thought, you know what? You're on the Xcast today. Let's talk a little bit of mm-hmm. Xbox. I want to share some Xbox love, some memories, and most importantly, some games you love. We have some games coming to PlayStation. I thought, well, I have the PS I Love You XO you show, sure boys. Do. We came uh, in here, know- we're sizing this up. It's only a matter of time before this is the second installment of a weekly show. <laughs> P.S. I love you, XOXO, colon, Xbox Publishing. That's exactly, Xbox that could be publishing. it, that's right. Uh, blessing, last week on P.S. I love you, XOXO, you and Roger gathered together to draft your f- dream Xbox games over to PlayStation, yep. the games you want to see on the console. So I'll start with you. Mm-hmm. Give me one title that you want to see on PlayStation. It could be anything. Oh. We already know the four titles, but we're having some fun here. We've talked about it for non-stop weeks here on the X-Cast about titles going over, but let's have some fun with you. Yeah, I'll cheat, uh, and I'll say Rare Replay. I know that's 30 times. Great answer. Yeah, but That's a great answer, Bless. It's a jam-packed collection of a bunch of my favorite games, right? Like, I'm somebody who grew up with the N64, and so having some of the best of the best N64 games with what Rare brought to the platform with Conquer, Mm -hmm. Jet Force Gemini, um, you know, Banjo-Kazooie, all that fun stuff. Like, I think that would be such a slam dunk. And then also, yeah, it sets you up for the future of, hey, if you ever bring back Banjo, if you ever bring back back Conquer, you're kind of like building up that audience to see that and go, oh man, I should pick that up on Xbox or PC or whatever it is. And so Rare Replay is one that, that's one of the reasons I got my Xbox is for Rare Replay. I'd love to see that make its way over to PlayStation. That's a title that seems like a slam dunk and wouldn't rock the boat that much. We talk about these four titles coming. I think people have gotten over Sea of Thieves and Grounded and they're like, okay, I understand. Rare mm-hmm. Replay is a game. That's not a flagship Xbox title by any means. It is just an awesome game that pays homage to Rare, has a great collection i i love the yeah. uh and edutainment that we call it the education and entertainment factor of like hey here's when here's it came history. out here's some history here's some descriptions of the games that you probably don't know yeah. about from all these years of rare so that's a good the only thing right i there. think is logistically i could see it being complicated just on the idea that when i when i boot up rare replay on xbox if I boot up a 360 game, like a Viva Pinata, you back. it's going to boot up like the other, like it's going to boot up the game with a different wrapper, essentially. And so when I play like Banjo Kazooie on Rare Replay, there's a 360 port, I believe. And so it boots up the 360 version. It's not all just built into the same yeah. software. So to do that on PlayStation, they will probably have to port those individual games or just make it all part of the same software. I don't know what the solution is, but I can see that being complicated. Maybe that's why they wouldn't do it, but I would love to see them try. Greg Miller, the king of PlayStation. Hi, everybody. It's me, Greg Miller. What game from the Xbox library would you like to see over? Well, this is a great question, Mike. And it makes me think of several titles, both old and new, Andy. Oh, both old and new. Of course, Greg. So I'll give an honorable mention, of course, to Stubbs the Zombie. (laughs) (laughs) Zombie! You know how much I love Stubbs. I was playing Stubbs on my Xbox when I bought it. Okay. Uh, You know, definitely a game that deserves to be left in the past. Yes. I don't need to play Stubbs in 2024. I remember Stubbs. It was good. I I could just walk away knowing Stubbs was a fun game in 2005 when I played it. That's an insane call. That's like as if you looked at me and was like, I need Blinks to Time Sweeper, Cat. It's like, no, yeah. Greg. That's why go. it's an honorable mention. Yeah, it's yeah. not my real I thing. Like All right. Like don't that. worry about it. They were doing the whole Fallout <laughs> thing, you know, the, the, the like 50s vibe. Doesn't matter if you don't remember Stubbs. Uh, then I think of, well, what about Jade Empire? Oh. Okay. Another one, of course, an infamous 9.9, I believe, on IGN.com from Dave Clayman. Uh, a Bioware game that has been lost to time, of course, because you think of now Mass Effect, back then KOTOR. Um, Jade, I'd love to see not just a port of it, you know what I mean? What if they did something new with that? What if they came in there and did another action RPG like that? Uh, Jade Empire could be interesting. But my real pick, and this is a crazy one, but my real, here's Jade Empire's trailer. Look at this thing. 2004. Four by three. We were playing games, game. <laughs> yeah, Andy. A special time. We, we, had, we had tall TVs we out here. What are we <laughs> doing? Movie. You know what I mean? A warrior trained from birth. It looks like, like a, a coming attraction on the VHS before yes. you watch Air Bud. <laughs> um, the real pick I would do right now, which is something that could blow up my face. But my pick would be the next fable. 
Oh, mm. you know what I mean? I okay. really loved Fable back in the day on Xbox. I'm excited for what this new Fable will be. Yeah. Of course, we don't know. Could be garbage. Could be well, great. Well, I mean, Playground's working on it. It seems like it's tracking in the right direction. I'm just saying I don't have inside information yeah, if it's yeah. going to be good or bad. So uh, rather than say, oh, well, remaster Fable or put a Fable collection out there, I'm saying, no, yeah. give me the new Fable. Just give me the new Fable. Yeah. Yeah, I am surprised you didn't say, oh, just give me the trilogy in a sweet collection, right? I think that would be a lot of fun. Get people but excited it still and feel interested old. in it. It would still yeah, feel old. Of course, old. old games are old. You know you what say, I mean? Old you games didn't are say, fun, though. You didn't say make a business decision. I like an yeah. old game. <laughs> he just wants something nice. Sure I like that. I love an old game. Now, you, now, I'm just thinking a lot about of my PSVR past. PSVR 1 games you can play on PSVR 2 right now. Why don't you go play those? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about my past now, yeah. Mike, as, uh, you know, I love sitting down for the weekend, popping on Xbox Live, getting ready for some Halo 2 mm. online with your friends, and popping over, popping open a Mountain Dew. Yep. Mm, and what better that. time than now than to drink some Love Mountain Dew? Oh! oh. Oh, wow, okay. Is this a bit you knew Some about? hard oh, Mountain Dew. Right. Hard Mountain Dew? One of those over. Holy oh, shit. Man. Oh, we're going to pop this pick, on the X-Cast pick, together. Pick, pick oh, my God. Flavor. Oh, pick yeah, whatever, whatever flavor you want. I'll drink late. whatever's left. I think what there's the same. Uh, Is pineapple? Uh, oh, wait. Oh, I got Baja Blast. I want Baja. I want Code Red. Code Red. It's no, not Code they're, Red. They're all Baja Blast flavored, but the red one is Punch, and then you got Mango, and then you got, I forgot what the other one is. Mango Pineapple. Okay. Ooh, man, Who, well, pick whatever decision. you want. Whoever whatever doesn't vibe with pineapple, I'll take it. If you well, don't. give him the pineapple, I like mango. Then. I'm gonna stick with pineapple okay. uh, with mango. And then Greg, whatever color you don't want, or whatever flavor you don't want, I'll do Baja Blast Punch. I love when we refer to sodas That's as just candy. colors. Just give me whatever color you don't want. <laughs> no, it's a now, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. I, when you got these, I didn't realize they were booze. Well, for the oh, first yeah. time. I don't know if you know this. I like drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Here on the X-Cast, let's take a little moment. There it to is. friendship and games. We're let's all go. together. This is a nice way to kick off a podcast, Andy. And you know what? It does bring me back. Just some old school Halo 2 days. Want to shout out a little fan creation out there. The Halo 2 servers on the original Xbox are now live oh, thanks oh, to some fans. Oh, or some fans out Mountain there. Mountain Dew, you got a winner. <laughs> Hard Mountain Dew, I'm in. Shout out to Mountain Dew for oh, sending man. these to me. Fantastic. This tastes like a weapon. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> it it takes me out. Holy cow. Yeah. Pineapple's very good. The pineapple one is yeah, good. The mango is mangoing. Happy to report. Red is, is always great. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was a great call. <laughs> All right, Andy, what would you like? Just the Halos? Well, I mean, you want me to, to bring something See, over See, you're the, the tough one, Andy, because you yeah. play everywhere. And I you and I, everywhere. we play Xbox together. I know these guys host the PlayStation show, so it's like, it's easy for them. But for you, everybody knows you're playing everything. But is there a title that you would love to see your family and friends, or even yourself, boot up a PlayStation and say, bang, it's on there for sale right now. That's cool. Um, Yeah, I mean, I think you all made some great calls last time with the Master Chief Collection. I think that's like a great kind of library to show not only history, but also, you know, with some of the more recent Halo games playing a lot faster, more modern feeling. It's hard to go back to the old Halos and be like, hey, check it out what the pinnacle of first person shooters on consoles was because they're slower and, you know, you feel their age. Yeah, they are. Yep. But they're still like amazing in so many ways. But the more recent Halo games, I know like a lot of people didn't love Halo 5, but Halo 5's multiplayer was fucking fantastic Fun. and so fast and cool with the little like jet pack you had to go like the thrust you have side to side and all that um yeah i think the master chief collection is a phenomenal choice yeah i like that selection right there you know some fun shout outs from the old school you know brute force is always funny it's a joke over here on the xbox side of things but to put out something like that or fusion frenzy a dope party game trapped in the beyond years would be really awesome but what I'd love to see for Bless here, yeah. the fighting game community, Killer Instinct. Oh my I God. would love to see Killer Instinct go bigger. As Blessing knows, when I talk about fighting games with him, as just the novice is, I know the mass appeal fighting games, right? Those games are everywhere. Anyone can get a hold of it. I think that's what Killer Instinct really needs and deserves. I know there's a killer fan base for it, but it could be so much bigger in front of a larger audience. And I really look forward to seeing what maybe Iron Galaxy does in the future, right? We talk about a team that is just kind of up in the air. Where We're did we leave off? Next. What is going on with it, Killer Instinct? Uh, I feel like no, it's been a long time. It yeah. just got a recent patch huh? to yeah. update the game and kind of bring a, a nice little new boost to the arm, but the we don't know. The last game was 2013, 2014, somewhere around there? Yes. It was like early Killer Xbox, Xbox was beginning that. Xbox One. Yeah. Yep, they patched that. It was like a 10-year patch is what yeah, this was. Yeah, yeah. But Iron Galaxy, no more Rumbleverse. Yeah. Hey, mm. Phil Spencer, pick up the phone. Let's get uh, Killer Instinct what, 2 going. What that game needs, and I, I think the... Tough thing. Well, I guess this isn't tough, right? Because PlayStation now owns Evo, and I assume that they're very hands off. I know they play on like PlayStation platforms or whatever, but like, I, as far as I understand, when I look at Evo, I'm like, okay, PlayStation's not really touching that that much. 
Evo every year has a bonus sort of game that is like a classic game that they bring back every year. Mm. And so this year, I believe it's Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, which is like a fan favorite. Oh, yeah. Dude, if you can do Killer Instinct for next year and bring that back with Evo and like get that hype going, that'd yeah. be sick. Be great to see. Yeah. So that's my call out right there. I think that deserves some love. Okay. It would be cool to see, especially the 10 year patch. It's hot right now. Why not try it again over there? But guys. This, of course, is the Kind of Funny X-Cast. We post each and every Thursday on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games and, of course, on podcast services around the globe. If you love what we do here at Kind of Funny, consider supporting us with the official Kind of Funny membership on Patreon and on YouTube to get all of our shows ad-free to watch us record them live as we go. And, of course, get your daily exclusive what, Greg Miller? Multimedia experience. <laughs> Greg way, ladies and gentlemen. From the Greg Miller, you can enjoy that each and every day. Of course, we like to thank those who support us over on Patreon, like our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, Kieran Hovo Sapien, and Delaney Twining. Thank you so much for your support. This week, the Kind of Funny X Cast is sponsored by Shady Rays and Robin Hood. But I'll tell you all about that in just a little bit. Guys, we've all come together. I've asked my gaming dads to take the week off because we have been on the ground here in sunny San Francisco checking out GDC and going to a number of awesome events like Day of the Devs. We've gone to the Mix, and we've gone to a special Xbox indie showcase where we teamed up with ID at Xbox to see a number of indie games. And I thought, you know what? Let's bring the crew together. Let's talk about some cool indie games coming to Xbox and beyond for the best friends to check out and have on their radars because there were some really cool titles. So I thought we'd go around. Everybody can pick one, Love it. maybe two, depending on time. And we can share some of the games that we played this week that we're excited for others to check out later on. Blessing, I'm going to kick it to you first because I'm going to go right down the line. Oh, yeah. What do you got for me, Bless? What did you see this week that you like? Or maybe you have other games I know, too. So I'm going to start off with one that I actually didn't see during GDC week. Um, Cheater! This, this last weekend, I went to a preview event down in L.A. for Fatal Fury, the City of Wolves. Um, it is the first entry into the Fatal Fury franchise in about 26 years. Uh, they announced that the release date now is early 2025, and so we're probably about a year out from this game coming out. Um, it is a new fighting game in Fatal oh. Fury. Yeah, brand new fighting game coming from SNK. Uh, SNK, they've done games like King of Fighters 15. They've done Samurai Showdown. They've been active in the last, like, you know, however many years, still putting out fighting games. But I feel like for them, they're a bit, they're quite a bit low key compared to like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and Tekken, right? Like SNK is making fighting games for their specific community, right? And like I would even go as far as to describe the community as like a bit more hardcore and honed in on like the very like technical, hey, we are. We are hardcore gamers, right? We are showing up to Evo. We are like a small, we're but frame counting. We're frame counting. We're a it's small boxing. but mighty crew of people that play fighting games. And so, like, uh, I remember my fighting game Discord was um, heated up when uh, King of Fighters 15 came out, and that was like a big thing. And then, you know, you kind of move on to the next one. Getting my hands on Fatal Fury over the weekend, I really, really had a good time with it. It's kind of in that same kind of you know feeling and style of a King of Fighters 15, right? Where it has like this fun art style, almost like you know bright comic book uh, uh style uh like obviously 2d um you know again bright colors stylized characters all this stuff a lot going on on screen uh and so it's fun to look at the i think way i would describe it in terms of feel and i guess in in terms of production compared to something like street fighter attacking is i would say it feels a bit more double a and that's not necessarily what does that mean though like, you know, like it's when I look at the backgrounds, when I look at like the amount of like, you know, stuff going on on screen, it's not the craziest game to look when at. When you said feels, I thought you meant something on sticks. Yeah. Felt mm. But I, you're, I, you're I, talking about the overall package. The overall package. Because I would even say, yeah, like, HUD definitely seems more scaled back than something you'd see in a Mortal Kombat or a Street Exactly. Yeah. But I do think that stuff extends to feel as well. Okay. Right. Where even when I'm pressing buttons, I am like, it's not like the smoothest motions. It's not like, you know, okay. it doesn't feel like I'm playing a Street Fighter. But I do, I do think it feels unique. And I like what it does with the systems. And I think this, the systems that they're implementing with this one are going to be what brings people in. And so this is my first time playing F Fatal Fury. I didn't play Fatal Fury back in the day. Uh, but the things that immediately spoke to me were uh, they have this thing called SPG. Uh, it is basically, if you look at the health bar, so uh, you can place your SPG gauge anywhere you want on the health okay. bar, like whether at the beginning, middle, or end. What happens when you um, enter SPG, right, when your life kind of gets to that level, uh, it's a gauge that 
you know, activates depending on where your health is at. Um, and when it's act when it activates, your health recovers over time. Uh, attacks become more powerful. Um, it builds up your power gauge in lo larger increments so you can like use your specials. Got it, got it. Uh, and then your rev builds up slower. And I'll get to rev in a second. But it's basically like an enhanced mode. That's awesome. Yeah. And I really like the idea of when I pick my character, I pick where I'm going to place my SPG. And now I got to like know when I'm going to lock in during the battle, which is fun for me playing Tekken currently because as I'm playing Tekken, I have moments where I'm like, all right, beginning of the match is usually a wash for me because I'm just like, I'm getting started. Get I'm getting the feel. Get sea legs. Mid match is where I'm really locking in for Tekken. And so I'm gotcha. like, all right, cool. And then late match, I kind of get freaked out a bit. You know, I get nervous. I fucking like, well, <laughs> drop the ball. <laughs> like, I'm fucking, like, he fell out of his chair. <laughs> controller falls out of my hands. Um, but like, I immediately, when I saw the system, I was like, okay, I'm going to start placing my SPG gauge in the middle because I know that's lock in mode for me. And it was fun kind of like smart. testing out that versus testing out at the, at the end of my life bar to see like, okay, you know, at the very end, and let's see what advantage that's get, that gives me towards the end of the match or towards the beginning of the match to start off strong. Sure, sure, I think sure. that's really cool. I think that's really unique. And I, and for me, it made this stand out. There's that. And then there's also the rev uh, system, which is the gauge that you see in, like, the bottom left that fills up. That fills up based on, like, the amount of, um, like, special moves that you do. And it's more so, like, the enhanced moves. And so, like, if I do, like, a strong, weak, and then, like, a, um, like, forward circle punch if you play fighting games you know exactly what i mean by that uh but if i do like a special move like I that don't, and i still understood so don't oh, worry okay. <laughs> if i do that it'll build up the rev gauge the thing here is that you don't want to do too many like enhanced special moves because uh that will send you into overdrive which basically means that you can't use more special moves and so that's kind of like burnout in street fighter 6 if you play street fighter 6 um it, I, I like that take on it. I like that like that kind of holds you back in terms of just throwing shit out all the time. Um, and yeah, and like the hour or so that I played of this game, one, I played half with like the CPU and then Danny Pena from Gamertag Radio came through and it was like, yo, you want to play some matches? You beat like, the doors do off him, didn't you? He actually beat me. Like it's, I started off beating him, but then as he got his, um, you know, his footing, he was able to lock in and he found his character in Rock Howard. Um, yeah, and great name. name, yeah, I like that. Dude, so the Rock, Rock, good name, Rock Howard. Rock Howard is sick. Uh, there's five different characters. Does he look that, like Todd Howard? No, <laughs> oh, man, you're just a yoke Todd Howard. So the five different characters they had in this build were Tizok, who is a who's the uh, character with the mask. He's like a big luchador grappler kind of character, heavy moves, and so like he's slow, but if he hits, he was gonna take a lot of damage. Built like a truck. Yeah, this built guy. like <laughs> built like a truck. You got Rock Howard. Uh, you got Terry Bogard, and Rock Howard and Terry Bogard are kind of like the two mascot characters, right? They're yes. Like you're, uh, what Ryu and Ken of this game, and so they pay, play similarly, but they have different properties. You have a character named Precha, and then you have Hotaru Fut Futaba, who is my character. So Hotaru is the uh, girl that you see on screen if you're watching on the video, and she's the one who plays a bit more traditionally. Like she has a fireball that she throws. She has like an uppercut type move. Uh, she's very uh, straightforward to use. But going back to my, I think this game is going to speak to the hardcore. Even Terry and Rock. Like, when I picked up those characters, I was like, dude, these are the mascot characters, and they are tough to use. Like, the fire, like, the projectile that they have is, like, a ground projectile, which is interesting for, like, a, you know, mascot character. Um, you know, they, the way they, the, they feel to move, like, the way they move around screen, I'm like, oh, man. This feels like a game that immediately from the get-go is like, hey, we're treating you with respect as a fighting game. Like, we are giving you characters that are really interesting, that are doing something different, that are uh, uh, fun. And so uh, I picked up each character at least once, and it was fun getting, to, getting familiar with all of them. And yeah, like, this is one that after this first hour or so of me playing, I'm like, I could see myself playing more of this. You know, I think this is going to be one, especially as we get out of 2024, uh, where we have Tekken, right, where we had uh, Mortal Kombat just come out and we had Street Fighter come out. As we get into 2025, I think it's going to be this and then um, 2XKO, the new name for Project L, that oh, are going to be terrible like... Terrible name. I know, terrible name. Yeah, I have that, to think about it. a really time. bad name right yeah. there. Should've I have to think about it. Project L I could make it worse than Project L. <laughs> <laughs> but I think those are going to be the two fighting games of next year, right? I'm sure maybe there can be... I think it's, I don't know when the Dragon Ball Z game comes out, Spar Sparkling Zero. But yeah, like I think this is going to be able to, to, you know, stand out, do its own thing. And I think there's going to be a community there for it. And I can't wait to see what that turns into. Are there any features you bring up the big three that you just spoke of that we've just played now? Mm -hmm. Are there some features that you want to see in this game that would really elevate that? Good online. I think that's okay. a big thing for me in any fighting game. You know, what does the lobby look like? What does ma ma uh, matching up with friends and then also matching up in ranked look like? Um, I, there are also other things that this game is taking uh, from as inspiration from games that have been coming out in the last few years, right? And so there's the smart style and arcade style of controls. 
which is basically like uh, the easier, more modern style controls we've seen fighting games do recently with Tekken and then also Street Fighter. So you have stuff like that. Again, I like the art style. I like the um, like I like the pick up and play ability, even though I think for newcomers to fighting games i think it could be tough but if you're somebody who plays fighting games i think picking it up and already like knowing that hey it's quarter circles right like i know how this game controls as a as this type of 2d fighting game i think that's gonna be fun for people but yeah i think the big thing for me is how's this gonna play online like how's the rollback how does it feel um but just playing the game i think it's fun that's great yeah more characters yeah, I mean, we're obviously we're gonna see, we're gonna see way more characters. Okay, good. It's I don't have any requests because again, I'm not a Fatal Fury yeah, person, yeah. so I'm curious to see what that looks like. You know, it's fun playing the game that Terry Bogard is from because Terry is also in Smash Brothers, right? But I'm like, you know, I don't know. Like, I think a lot of people are like, oh, cool, I know this guy from Smash. It's cool seeing uh, Terry here, and so yeah, I want to see what else they got. Blessing, thank you for that, thank and you. I'm looking forward thank to that one. Craig Miller, hi. You and I went to a couple events together. What do you I'm got sure for did. me? Uh, I want to start with in Kobini. Kanbini. Kanbini. In Kanbini. Uh, it's that uh, little one you're going to hear a lot of people talk about. A lot of people are going to talk about this. Uh, it is so new that there isn't a trailer out for it. Uh, developers are showing it. Uh, the developers are uh, Nagai Industries. You want to put that? Yeah, Nagai Industries. Nagai Industries. Oh, look at this. Blue Thunder. Friend of the show. Uh, I met him uh, at Game Awards, nice and job. obviously you met him here at GDC. I met him at uh, put up last year thing. Well. Yeah, put up some thing. Uh, if you are like me and Joey... And like a good, hey, there's some kind of emotional turmoil here in this slice of life game. This is up your alley. Uh, think of Lake, but rather than delivering mail, you are in fact working at your auntie's convenience store in Japan mm. in the 90s. And so the idea here is that this demo we did that you're watching right now picks up on your first night shift alone and you need to stock the shelves you need to check out the customer you need to talk to the yep. customers uh there's just this one old man who comes in and alludes to the fact that he ha he can only come in at night because he's offended your auntie before he talks about uh, some of his own personal issues right there you kind of help him through it by answering some questions but you are in charge of stocking the shelves with the cola stocking the shelves with the beer uh going out and putting the noodles on the shelf and the ramen on the shelf uh just walking by and straightening shelves if you see packages with the, yes. the wrong, turn the wrong way you're supposed to stop and fix them it is a very at least at this point meditative right of like hey you're working at a convenience store you have to go through and scan it rotate as you're watching you're rotating the items like you would in uh, a fallout or anything else to then go in and scan the barcode and put them out there and the art style is fantastic yeah, I, that's style seeing this in real like yeah, up yeah. in person looked in, looked really damn good yeah the first note i have on mine here is a uh, gorgeous art like i think it's a really really pretty yeah. game right uh it's you know, super early. You know, when it, I was when I was playing, somebody's like, "When is it coming out?" And he goes, "Oh, Q5." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, Q5. I was like, I don't like know "Okay, so we're not gonna see this game for quite some time." I don't think. That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, it was something. I mean, you know, that's the best thing about GDC is all the independent developers. So to say it was something different is ridiculous because everything we're about to talk about is probably something different. Even if you're talking about how fighting game uses it, health bar a different yeah. way, right? But it was something you know unique where. I don't think Lake was a runaway success by any stretch of the imagination, but it's like, looks like it's in that genre of, hey, go play this slice of life game and find out what's going on in this town and how much this convenience store means to the people there. And like, even the card that they were able to give, right, it says one store period, many stories period. And nice. You want to talk about, like, you want to talk about That's selling deep, Greg there. You know <laughs> what I mean? On a game. Like, I thought it was really cool. I thought it was really beautiful. There's definitely a dead parent somewhere. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100 Somebody's dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're supposed to go back to college. I'm like, she ain't going back to college. Nah. You know, in the act two, auntie's going to die or something. I got to run She's the She's got to find herself. Yeah, yeah exactly. How exactly. can she find happiness when she hasn't found herself yet? Exactly, oh. exactly. Huh. Uh, yeah, I love how you put that, the slice of life like Lake, but of course the high that me, Joey, and Nick have been on is gas station simulator. Yeah. These simulator job sim games have been so hot right now, and this merges the two of them that I feel more that I like than Lake, right? Lake very much felt like, hey, we're following the story. It isn't just about being the mailman. This more feels like, hey, I'm doing the job sim, and there's going to be some nice touches of story. I loved when the older man walked in and he goes, oh, they got this soda. I loved this 50 years ago when I was a kid. And I was like, man, that's like, I like these small touches. Or he walked out and was like, I wish I could read this, but someone hasn't properly stocked it. And I'm like, he got me. I did skip that aisle. That's my no bad. No my See, kicked you I out. Like and, and what's interesting is there were, I was expecting to be graded, to get a fail state or something like that. None of that happened. No. But I didn't have that issue. It was, I wish I could read it. Can you can you help me? And I, they, I had laid them all out right, but it was that I needed to rotate the can and find the one that was the pea based or something like that. Mm. Like the, the vegetable. 
unreasonable. Don't be a pervert. No, no. All right. I got excited. Uh, and then there was another one too, or like I didn't, you know, fully understand. So I brought out all the different food items, and like you saw there, like cola had a space, so I put the cola there. There's a shelf underneath it. Okay, I put the beer there. Put the ramen noodles down, and then there was a different kind of ramen that had a different package, and I couldn't find it in the store. So I found an opening on a shelf and put it there. And the man walked by, and he's like, "Oh." Do you, you don't have my favorite ramen and it was the one I misplaced because I put it in the bread section and nice. not the ramen section so he got something else and I had to convince him and tell him why it was like a neat little oh like it's pivoting and moving a bit based on what we're doing in the game yeah I really enjoyed that and meditative is a great word for it it is a calm surreal experience you put on your headphones they really encouraged me hey put on the headphones and like Everything just drowned out. It was just me just yeah. zoning out. Nice little light rain in the background. It was easy. And I really enjoyed that feeling of I didn't even turn on the sign yet. It was just me in the store walking around having fun because stocking the shelves is an enjoyable experience. Pulling all the bottles off one by one. You see yeah, them going yeah. real fast. <laughs> when you put yeah, it back yeah. on. Felt so rewarding to do. Yeah. And then it was cool to flick on the light and have the open sign on. And I sat there. And I'm like. Well, where's the people, right? Like, it is a different experience than gas station sim where it's like, oh, you're just going to be flooded and you got to go left and right. It's very much like, hey, chill and just enjoy the moment. And then when they walk in, you get to do stuff, which was cool. Yeah, that was all cool. There's a little bit of environmental storytelling going on. There was a note in the back that Auntie had lost her wedding ring. So I was like looking around for that. That's somewhere to find. Uh, the, one of Auntie's notes, the way that she called in uh, at the beginning of the demo to tell you like what to do. Another was to pick up the notepads other people, the other employees had left and like, read through them because they're just going to be notes about the store but they're not they're notes about their day and like there's somebody in there who's being called the wrong name and so i was like i'm very interested to see what that narrative thread's going to be of like are we have we been calling this one employee the wrong name he's worked here this <laughs> entire time is he like suicidal because of it i don't know what's going on but Jesus. i'm very interested to see I, I had a great time with this demo and i'm excited for it to eventually one day come out yeah this is going to be a really cool one can't wait for this one. if you're in a car in con beanie uh if Convenience is convenience. This would be inconvenience. I N K O N B I N I. Keep an eye out for that one. I'm going to go to Andy next, but right after a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Shady Rays, an independent sunglasses brand that has over 300,000 five star reviews. They are on a mission to match affordability with durability, making top quality shades accessible to everyone. They have tons of styles and colors to pick from, so finding the perfect polarized shades is a breeze. If you want an upgrade, we recommend their premium Color Rush lenses. Crafted with rare earth materials, these lenses bring high impact color to life, elevating reds, blues, and and greens. Here at Kind of Funny, we all love wearing our Shady Rays, whether it's me looking dope doing my Pokemon Go walks, Snowbike Mike rocking the snow goggles, or Joey just looking fantastic in her tangle-free shades. If your shades go MIA or take a hit, don't sweat it. They've got lost and broken protection, so you're covered from day one. And if you don't love your shades, exchange or return them for free within 30 days. Exclusively for y'all, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Head to ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 300,000 people. Again, that's shadyrays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. This episode's brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Andy Cortez, you're up next. What did you see throughout GDC week that you would like to share with the audience? A couple of games uh, were at Day of the Devs, um, and one that I got to play twice, actually. Oh, and That's oh. my most anticipated. It's Hyper Light Breaker. Oh, oh yeah. Again, it's only slated for Steam right now, but Solar Ash and Hyper Light Drifter went to every console, so you got to assume it's coming to Xbox. And this is the follow-up from Heart Machine. 
This is, um, you know, their first game since Solar Ashes came out two years ago. And Hyperlight Drifter was their first game in 2016. And that's one of my favorite games of all time. And this is set in a prequel world uh, prior to the events of what happened in Hyperlight Drifter. And it is just the stylish, most vibiest game you've ever seen. Um, it is a third person hack slash extraction roguelite there's a lot he of threw a lot of genres at us when we went to the presentation <laughs> there's you and I. there's a lot of genres out there um but n it wasn't until i saw the timer on the top left when you're going out for a mission that i was yeah. like oh it's kind of getting like a little hell, hell diver sort of vibe Ooh. where like i'm not i wasn't expecting to have to go out there and like well let me try to kill what i can kill before i go back and and extract out of here with whatever it is i'm trying to collect which i'm assuming is like the you know the in-game currency or whatever but um, yeah, Hyperlight Breaker just looks great. It feels good to play. Um, it, it's exactly what I've wanted, which is a 3D Hyperlight Drifter type game. And they, you were only allowed to play as one character, and I'm not sure how the characters differentiate, but you had three different build types that you could go into. And one is the balanced sort of jack of all trades where you have a normal sword with a kind of rifle gun. The second option was double dagger, much quicker, much smaller range, and you had a pistol that shoots really fast. And the third one was, I believe, a shotgun and a very heavy sword that was very lumbering, but it really packed a punch. And uh, I got to play as all three. I played during that first demo session on Day of the Devs, and then when we had our mix event later at night, I went to go like get in line again because I wanted to play a bit more. Um, but it's... It's exactly what I've been wanting. It's what I've been looking for. Um, go out into this world, set out in your adventure. It will be co-op. Um, I think they're targeting early access for sometime, hopefully this summer, maybe the fall. And um, you and your friends could go out and go out on this adventure and try to you know, hack and slash as many enemies as you want. It just feels good to play. Whenever you're run running around, you can bust out your hoverboard, which then allows you to traverse the little environment uh, a bit quicker but i think one of the coolest things is um hearing about the tech they're talking about when they're making this open world that it's still procedural like it's it, it's like the most handcrafted procedural world which i know is kind of you know that that doesn't make a whole lot of sense it does though i understand what you mean it, it doesn't have the lifelessness sometimes you've seen a procedural generation right That's yeah it. and it's just super fascinating to hear like the challenges that that they've kind of run into going for that but also a lot of the successes and i'm just gotta have to, the glider no let's you go. gotta have the glider. Yeah. Just sold me I'm, I'm just stoked to see exactly what the what the end product's going to be but essentially when you're outside in this world you th there will be three elites that you can take on before you take on the final big boss of that one area. And the three elites are going to be, you know, pretty asshole-ish in, in their behavior, and they're going to hit you really, really hard, and you have to dash. You can parry, of course. Um, the ammo does not work the way it worked in Hyperlight Drifter, where Hyperlight Drifter was one of the first games that kind of, uh, that I'd seen that if you run out of ammo, it, it you're really meant to play with gun and sword. You're not just meant to... There's a lot of games where I'm like, ah, oh, but which one am I going to main first? Favor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and the way it works is you're supposed to use them in tandem almost like completely balanced because in Hyperlight Drifter, when you would run out of ammo, you'd go into Slash more to get the ammo back. And in here, I believe the, the, the drops are what give you your ammo back instead of like just slashing. But the combat felt great. Um, I, I did have some issues with like the camera and the lock-on. Whenever you would lock on to somebody, you would like drastically like snap the camera in a certain way which didn't feel supernatural but the the auto aim when you're shooting people felt very very good and yeah meeting big enemies and trying to parry them at the right time felt awesome it just it just oozes style in every way and i had a great time so much so again that like i was not super stoked when my time ran out the first time I was like, oh, <laughs> of course dude, not on, man you like, of course not. i didn't even get to like this freaking boss guy so i was able to to take on this big boss character a couple times at the mix where I just like sped to it without any upgrades, got my ass handed to me. It was very excited to do so. Uh, and yeah, I just, the, the, they have just such a great, uh, like a great mind when it comes to what looks good and what feels good and what plays good. And you go back to your hub world and that's where you can meet a bunch of different NPCs that I'm assuming will either give you missions or help you upgrade certain systems, whether it is your weapon. Maybe you don't want to have that one gun, but you can, upgrade to the better version of that weapon um 
it's awesome. Look it's bullet hell. a lot of different. <laughs> it's a lot of different genres, and I'm so excited to experience all of them. Uh, again, this is Hyperlight Breaker. Hoping to hit early access sometime in the next several months. Hopefully this year. Sometime. I definitely, I definitely wasn't as smart as Andy when it came to this because I didn't make an appointment, and I'll, I, I think I knew it was gonna be a day of the dev. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll just play it whenever. And so I go over, and there's just a long line, and there never stopped being a long line. <laughs> yeah. for Hyperlight Breaker, which is a sign of like, oh, this is gonna be a, like a very good game, right? Like people can't get enough of this thing. Yeah. And I go to the mix, and I'm like. I still can't get a spot. Right, cool. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I may have stole somebody's spot, but that person was like, you know, nice and and gentle enough to not have any conflict and be like, hey, I was next, buddy, or whatever. Mm -hmm. The guy just kind of like stood there. I was like, oh, they're not saying anything. Maybe I am next. Um, I had a great still time with it. it. Still just stole it. That was me. <laughs> I looked down at my shoes and walked away. <laughs> I had a great time with it. I, I'm so excited for it. It, it lived up to the expectations, and um, I'm more excited to. I'm even more excited to play it alone because. So much of Hyperlight Drifter is about the soundtrack from Disaster Piece, where it's just like, it's so like experiential and the music just makes you feel a certain way. Yeah. And here I could hear some of the music kind of coming through, but there was a big crowd. There's a lot of people talking. It was hard to fully concentrate. So I'm stoked for all the, all of those sound effect callbacks to bring that nostalgia back from 2016. Just so you know, uh, as you've been talking about Hyperlight Breaker, Greg has opened up Fantasy Critic. Just he's just looking. He's I'm, I'm just pointing out. And you Walk know what? That's the, the right thing to do not, on the X-Cast. Okay, yeah. Look up and uh, update your fantasy critic. I appreciate that. That's the right thing. You guys were always known for that last we're year. We're talking about indie game. Well, I did. <laughs> God, don't God, come at so you, you come at Gary. Don't come at Paris, though. He did it. While you, you know, and I did mine. We're back to this. Just in a natural transition, which yeah. I appreciate. <laughs> You said earlier, you know, you told your gaming dads to ride. Yeah. When are we going to stop this Kate Middleton situation? What have you done to Gary Whitta? I can't. Where are you hiding the body? <laughs> He's fine. He will return. I'm not going to lie. A few weeks ago, I looked at, over at Roger, and I was like, does Gary Whitta still work here? <laughs> does he still do things? He will <laughs> return. He will return, people. Uh, I thought it was really cool. Me and Andy went to the SF MoMA, where uh, Tim Schaefer and Greg Rice from Double Fine and I Am 8-Bit teamed up and had a really cool exhibition where they brought up different developers and had kind of showing games that were really different and very artful. And it was awesome because the founder, Alex, stood up and gave a presentation, right, Andy? And I found that to be cool of, like, taking inspirations from other games and, like, learning and this kind of environmental storytelling they really talked about. That world is so gorgeous and beautiful and it's well thought out of, like, you see that over there. And we've talked about this in Dark Souls. Like, you see something over there, you're going to make it over there. But, like, having those pieces play into the world that we're going to see. And also, on top of that, you brought up, like, the dialogue, right? Non-traditional dialogue. There isn't Mike talking to you. It is yeah. kind of symbols and different stuff going on, right? Yeah, Solar Ash was their first game that they ever had dialogue in because Hyper like drifter whenever you talk to an npc they would the npc would speak to in like three different illustrations and you would see oh these people attacked their hometown their parents were, were murdered or whatever now this person's just like living alone now and they, they've always been about sort of you know having that non-traditional stuff without cutscenes without dialogue and obviously they they are pretty influenced by a lot of what uh from software does with you know reading little pieces of lore and things like that and they're trying to do the same thing here with making a world interesting enough to want to be in and want to learn about uh, without having it all kind of just shoved in your face and, you know, giving you the, the rundown of everything immediately from an NPC at the, the local hub world or whatever. Yeah, being at the SFOMA and seeing that presentation, I, I gained a lot of respect for that team and going, man, this game is very interesting, right? As someone who's never seen these games, I go, oh, wow, okay, maybe I'm missing something. I should go check that out for sure. So I encourage everyone to go look that one up, and uh, hopefully it will come to Xboxes, right, Andy? Mike, what did you like? Well, let me tell you what I liked, Greg. Um, I really liked Go Go Town. I liked this fun village sim of coming hot off of Animal oh, I didn't Crossing. I see this one. Yeah, this one was in the back corner, and I had a blast with the team from Prideful Sloth. So I'll tell you all about this. If you are looking for a fun, family-friendly co-op experience where it is a awesome tycoon sim, it has resource management, and, of course, it is a city simulator, this is the game for you. It is cute. It's adorable. Uh, it has so much vibrant color and has a lot going on. You become the mayor of kind of a run town, rundown tourist city, and it is you are now tasked with kind of bringing it back to life and making it a fun tourist hub during the day. 
and at night where you'll have some fun kind of ghosts and uh, wolf type people come by, which is cool. I like it a lot. Uh, but the fun one is, is, of course, you start off in the beginning. You learn about the resources, right? You're going to sure. have to go mine. You're going to have to chop down chop wood. Down You're going to have to start to resource manage to then build out your city. And I thought the cool part about that, tell me, Greg. So how much of this is... Animal Crossing fuck about versus, uh, hey, I actually have to be this man is, managing a, por a portfolio to make sure I have enough money or whatever. I think this will be more Animal Crossing fuck Hell about, yeah. but it will be heavy into the TM. resource <laughs> management because you will have to use the wood, the stone to be able to build out your town that you're going to need. So you will have to this be on your good, piece of This looks good, Mike. This looks cute as hell. Yeah. Four player split screen. I thought it was really cool to be able to share this. Does Joey know with yet? Your friends, I've shared it with Joey. Uh, I believe there might be a demo on on Steam right now. Uh, they're aiming for early access. They want to get this in the hands of people right away, so you can get out there and start playing it, and they can learn and grow with you all. But I really encourage you to check this out if you're looking for a fun town sim where you can create and craft. I think this is really going to be something cool for you. And I really like the tourist nature of it. Right, people are going to be coming from the train, and they're going to see your shop. And sometimes shops over time are going to lose their luster. They're yeah. going to want to evolve and change it up. So it's going to be on you to be able to take that falafel shop and make it an ice cream shop and change and mix and match. Damn, and I like as well, out. you can even go in and perform the jobs in there. They have a small, like <laughs> tiny mini game. It's nothing too difficult. They didn't yeah, want yeah. to go hard on the mini games, but you can like kind of take over the shop for a minute and make items for yourselves. There was also a uh, pet rock store that I really enjoyed. We were selling <laughs> pet rocks, the cute guys and gals. So I encourage you, if you're looking for that, check this one out. Go, go town is a lot of that fun. That seems awesome. Yeah. Blessing. Mike. We only have a little bit of time left, so I'm going to end with you today. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, we got so much time. Don't worry. Are you, I mean, are I you got to make sure you get out. Go to on five. Time. Just go all right. Five. Yeah, do one full thing. Wow. Well, I'm, gonna be, I'm not going to be that climactic with mine. Okay. okay. I, I want to give a couple of shout outs. Give us games. a couple of shout outs. So, like, uh, I want to shout out Corrupt and Yellow Taxi Goes Room. Those are two oh. games that aren't announced for Xbox, Yo. but I don't know where else I'm going to talk about them. So yeah, I'm going to just like, give a here. quick uh, shout fine. out. Corrupt uh, is a game that was at The Mix. Uh, it's being developed by a kind of funny best friend. Uh, it's another fighting game, actually. Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah, once I got to The Mix, I think Andy was there. And Andy was like, yo, there's this game you got to check out. Uh, and I started playing it, oh. and it's really cool. Oh, yeah, was yeah, it you? Yeah, yeah. It might have been you, Mike. Yo, those guys were great. Out. Those guys are great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah. it was me. How drunk were you, Blessing? <laughs> oh, I'm drunk right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the deal, Andy. If we see a fighting game, we go to Bless. So it's probably both. Yeah, both. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah, yeah. yeah, told me at some point. Uh, it is spelled C O R E U P T, if they're trying to uh, pull it up. Uh, or Kevin, I don't know who's in that room. <laughs> but yeah, Corrupt is a 2D fighting game. Uh, on my way there, a lot of people were, were telling me that like they're comparing it to something like uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, but I would even say like it is more along the lines of like a. Mortal Kombat, like 3D models, but like it feels really crunchy in the combat, which I really like. Um, but the style also reminds me of this N64 fighting game called Bio Mutants that nobody played. Um, there's something about it that like I like, right? It has like this sci-fi futuristic but dystopian style to it where like the characters are like wearing these fucking like you know light up armor and shit and they got weapons you've never seen before um and it was really cool playing it. Like this is one that really impressed me just for the fact that it's being developed by a small team, right? Small developer. I don't even know if it's more than just the guy like i don't know how many yeah. people they have working on this thing but playing it i'm like oh this feels right you know i, I had somebody walk up uh, as i was playing and then like we started playing against each other and it was fun it was engaging the um i was button mashing and i was still pulling off combos in ways that i was like yo this is fucking cool like this is fucking awesome so i want to give this one a quick shout out again cool. it's not coming to xbox yet never say never hopefully they're able to find a way to bring it to the give platform. them the money Give them the money. And then Yellow Taxi Goes Room was the one that I didn't get to get hands on with, but I saw Roger playing it at Day of the Devs, and I was looking over the shoulder, and I was like, oh, this is really I cool. I went hands on with this. Yeah. And there's a demo out on Steam right now if you're interested in some of these games. It is a blast. It is a 3D platformer collectathon where you are a toy RC car and you are flying around the areas. You're going to use your kind of turbo to get higher without a jump. So there's no jump button in the mm -hmm. game. And you're going to kind of use ramps along with your turbo boost to get up to higher ledges. And yeah, it is funny. It is weird. It's wacky. It is fast. And it's a good time if you're looking for a collectathon. And I was, I was, I was, I was watching Roger play it. I was like, oh, that's a blessing ass game. Like, yeah. I got to make sure that I get that on my list. Again, and another one coming to PC. Uh, I don't think they have it announced for Xbox yet. But again, never say never. Bring to the platform. Xbox coming to Switch Game too, Pass. I believe. Yeah, coming to Switch as well. Uh, the one I want to close on for me, though, is this game Luna Abyss. Oh, oh. Yeah. we talked about it last year on the X Cast. So oh, did awesome you really to see them continuing to grow? And uh, they're getting more excited when I spoke with the devs. They're yeah. getting very excited. This is one that was, again, at the uh, ID at Xbox event.
event. It's one that as soon as I got there, multiple people were like, bless, you got to check out Luna Abyss. And after getting hands on it, on it um, I understand totally why. It's like if um, it's like if Prey was Doom. Yes. You know, <laughs> like it's like it is a cool like space uh, first person shooter that has kind of like that flow and momentum of a modern Doom game where it is you're you're platforming around and you're getting into combat and there's like bullet hell shit going on. Um, and it feels like that to play. The one thing that I found fascinating was that um, L2 was a lock on button which is really interesting for a first-person shooter, right? Like, the fact that they have you locking onto enemies in that way. Like, that's not how Doom works. Um, Do but, bullets curve or anything, or is it just... No, it is like okay. a... Like, it, like you know... It's like, like Metroid Fox Prime, on. sort of. Okay. Yeah, Metroid Prime is the perfect way to put it. Um, but it was still fun, right? Like, even with that mechanic, like, it didn't take away from it. I was like, okay, cool. I get to kind of... I get to play this in even kind of more of a laid-back fashion where it is I'm just shooting up everything and I'm just taking out everything. And I really like it. I like the enemy variety. It is all fucked-up alien-looking creatures. Uh, and the setting... The setting is why I mentioned Prey, right? It is, like... The, you're on like these different planets. I think what I was playing was more of a place, uh, more of a space station. Uh, yes, you're in a prison, so you're a prisoner yeah. that breaks out, and yeah, you, yeah, it's yeah. Cool. And it's 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 really cool, and yeah, it felt right to play. Uh, and I only played probably about 15 minutes, but in that 15 minutes, I was like, oh yeah, no, I, this is one I can't I, I can't wait for. It's really cool. Yeah, you're gonna get abilities. You're gonna get dash in there. I actually spoke with the art director, and they're very excited to show more. Right, like right now, mm -hmm. you probably saw me and Andy play this last year and talk about it. You'll see a lot of dark rooms with the vibrant red glow to it. But they are excited for you to see more of it because there is a lot more going into this game than just that setting. So it will be exciting to see once that does fully come out. But yeah, fast, fluid yeah. combat. I am all about and the, the game. harsh red light, the yeah. visuals, yeah. like the art style, all of that stuff. Like. It's so control. It's so um, returnal. It's just like yep. those vibes are it's perfect. Visually striking. And it's another one that makes me ask the question of like, why don't we get more Doom style first person shooters that are like quality? You know, like I feel like we, ha we, get, we get attempts at it. We get like smaller scale versions of that. But I think with what Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal, what they brought to the table, I think there's so much space there in terms of, hey, well, let's put a lot of heart and a lot of like production behind this another one of these kind of games yeah. that I really liked what I played. Greg Miller, you get to go again. Tell me. Yeah. Thanks for trying to sing me off. Not today, buddy. <laughs> sorry, bro. You have sorry I to called do. it out. Ah, the GDC awards can wait. I'm not presenting. Uh, <laughs> well, I didn't know we could just call out things that aren't coming. Well, first off, I was wrong. Yellow Taxi goes room, not coming to Switch. Just a piece of okay. I don't want to get in okay. the way of that. Uh, I did want to call out Children of the Sun. This was a Devolver digital game that we played. Uh, it's on PC. I assume if you got the Xbox Game Pass PC, you know, you got a PC you never out know. there. You got a PC. Uh, where you control the one bullet, a puzzle game, right? As you go through and try to figure out how to kill everyone on the map with one bullet. Yeah. So you can it was cool. And go. I have to imagine, even though it's only announced for Steam, that's coming to a console at some point, and I imagine it's coming to Xbox. Uh, Children of the Sun, highly recommend if you get the chance uh, to do it. You could go catch, of course, uh, the showcase we did, uh, Spring Game Showcase uh, live uh, on youtube.com slash kind of funny games to watch me play it badly and have Kevin yell at me a lot. But it's your sniper, you're taking out a cult, you're going through and doing all this stuff. Just move one bullet around this level. Very simplistic controls to get into, but then it is the ability of the bullet. You kill somebody. All right, how do you pivot to go get the next person? Yeah. There's a demo out now on Steam. Get it. Uh, the game, though, I'd like to bring up that I played on Xbox, Sopa. Oh. Yeah, this is the one where the, your, your grandma calls you Miho the entire Miho. time. Made me think of Andy. Um, another Greg-ass video game. Uh, you know, the way they talk about this uh, and what their little, their little description on Steam is, Emotional narrative adventure about the things we pass along. Oh, you man. You know that's a Greg fucking game. And so <laughs> you almost cried just saying that. <laughs> yeah, I know. If it's you're beautiful. watching it, this is the part I played, right? Where your your nana is gives you a hot chocolate uh, and then is cooking you uh, food. And you have to go back and get the potatoes from the uh, pantry. And as you walk into the pantry, it gets longer and longer and longer, exhibiting, of course, how scared you are of the dark or the Aww. pantry. You finally get to the end. And as you grab the potatoes, a frog also grabs the potatoes and you start struggling with the frog and he pulls them back further and further and further is that a real frog or an imaginary frog what happens uh, this is obviously a big question there because you're calling back to grandma about it and this frog's doing it oh that's funny he's got a he's got a hat on bow and, uh, and then you tumble into his world and so i was very much like okay is this a narnia situation is this something else and i immediately turned around and went back and i went immediately back to grandma's kitchen and so it's clearly the little kid having a cool. daydream and playing or whatever right yeah. so i was like oh cool there the stakes are that it's not 
your life's on the line, it is, of course, that you're just a kid having fun in the pantry or whatever. And playing it's Narnia with an Enya. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. an imaginary game. And so, yeah, you know, you go through it, and then it's very if this, then that puzzle solving. So, like, you see the frog run away with potatoes, and then there's a river, so it's like you need a boat. So you go back through the pantry, back into Grandma's world, and you run around the house in the yard, find something that could be the boat. You bring it back, you put it through, then you got to get an oar. So you run all the way back, find something in the house to be an oar, paddle down in a little, you know, mini game, end up on this island of frogs and explain to them what's going on. It's like, it's very much a kid narrative. Uh, it's very much in, is, you know, it's in Spanish. So it's in, uh, you know, you're being uh, entrenched in this Sometimes. culture or whatever. Well, it's like the Miho in this, okay, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think, you know, you're getting the a- angle of it. <clears throat> and so uh, it was very much like a cool, narrative slice of life different place you know none of the mechanics i were doing were outrageously fun nor were they a a chore it was just like you know from point a and they all get there real quick and go through and there's funny lines talking to the frogs and doing their missions and getting off there again as you saw there but if maybe you're a listener and aren't seeing it i think the art's great i thought that was really interesting visually striking i mean we walked into that room and it was like you saw that tv and you couldn't take your eyes off of that tv it was beautiful yeah you know i think uh it does interesting things like i'm saying it's it's puzzle solving on the nose but then also the mechanics that are dropping in and how they tell the story with it of like you saw the dog growling that's nana's dog and so it is that like he growls at you and then you have to reach she's like just reach out and let him smell you or whatever and so you have to like pound a and like the kid's like shaking his, you know what I mean? it's like it's like it's this really cute thing of being in that thing the one thing i would say if you're an audio listener what stood out to me and i imagine blessing can keep me honest on this is that it gave me big dreams vibes mm. you know what i mean it's a game that if you showed me and told me it was made in dreams i'd be like yeah totally you know what i mean and that's not a knock or an insult to it it's just the fact of like looking for that colorful not muppet but like it has a tactile look to it. If that yeah, makes it looks sense. like like a stop motion, almost like core line sort of yeah, 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 yeah. 3D models. Yeah. So again, little narrative game, really cute. There's a secret knock mini game. I'm excited to play it eventually. Yeah, it looks good. Andy, um, I saw more of, but the demo was there again, which I've already talked about on Gamescast for the game hashtag Blood, which is that very animated style looking game, top down Zelda. And that's going to be a Steam game, but. What I did finally get to see played in person in front of me was Crow Sworn. Ooh. And Crow oh, Sworn no. is basically, hey, well, look, I want to make a Hollow Knight style game too. And that's what these developers are doing at Mongoose Rodeo, I believe is the name of the developer. That's correct. And uh, Crow Sworn, it looks like if, if you were to like, if Blessing were to take a screen cap of like a fourth of this screen and put it on a game showdown. I was like, what game is this from? We'd all say Hollow Knight. Mm. Um, but it is, instead of you being the little Hollow Knight bug, you are a crow with a scythe. And you got a cool little hat on, and it is just like pure style, pure action, awesome looking boss fights. It was so awesome to finally see it in person because Crow Swan was a Kickstarter game, and... A game that I tried Kickstart supporting, I was like, "Oh, it's too late to support on Kickstart because that's the only way you get." Now like, they're gonna code. fail because of you. No, it's like that's the only way that you could like get into these early betas or whatever. Um, but to finally see it in person was really badass, and to see people fight and struggle with the boss fights, I the line was always too long, and I could never get there because it was always somewhere else I needed to be in that moment. But uh, I would stop by every time to see what what people were doing. It's just like. Going to be a very challenging 2D side scroller with that striking Hollow Knight art style. With again, these boss fights that just look really punishing but fun, and it it, it rarely looked like whenever somebody was dying, like the game was being punishing or too mm-hmm. unfair. Mm-hmm. It's like, God, no, you, it looks great. You got to these abilities. You have to like take advantage of them. And yeah, it's like I'm very very shocked that it's from. Uh, it's not from uh, Team Cherry, who's making Hollow Knight. This game just looks fantastic. And very interesting enough, the marketing person for this also does marketing for Hollow Knight Silksong. <laughs> so I was What's like, up? Where's that? Yeah, it was just like a very <laughs> weird kind of like, oh, okay, I guess they're very, working very closely together. Um, Crosshorn just looks phenomenal, and I am so stoked for demos to finally be available for everybody else. And this is Hashtag Blood, the game that I talked about on, on, on Gamescast recently. Maybe it was a Games Daily. But uh, a game that looks so good in trailers and you just assume that that's how it's like an animated trailer. And like, no, that's how the game looks. It looks like a Cartoon Network animated game. It is funny as hell. It's got a great sense of humor. 
there's an in-world sort of social media thing that you can meet a bunch of friends with and see what they're tweeting in their world. Uh, but it's essentially you're, you are a, a young girl who comes from a lineage of like vampire hunters and you don't really discover that until later on. So you are... The vampires are here, and you have to help defend your world from it. But the art style, just anytime you see it, it looks like you're watching a, a 2D animated, you know, thing that isn't gameplay. But this is all gameplay, and it That's is all fantastic. That's it's so a, crazy. It's a top-down Zelda-like, and it's a very similar story to uh, the people who worked on Cana Bridge of Spirits, where uh, they were initially like a just animation studio making. They made that Majora's Mask 3D animation. And that's what this studio was known for as well. But then they kind of started, I guess, maybe one of their goals was to always make a game. And I was able to, I walked by the devs. I was like, oh, I love the demo play to Steam Next Fest. They're like, oh, we saw your stream. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry for like any bad stuff I may have said about the game. But the game's fantastic. I'm super stoked about it. And um, I believe that's coming out pretty soon. Um, it felt like it was going to be a much quicker release. June 18th, 2024. So a couple nice. of months from now. Uh, to finish this off, Andy and Bless, I'm going to need your help. We saw a Metroidvania-like game at that Xbox event, but it was a Metroidvania, Metroid Timevania, it was described Echo as. Echo Weaver. Echo Weaver. Go. This game I got to sit down and play was rad. Uh, I went straight up to Blessing because some of the kind of callbacks were, of course, Forgotten City and these games that kind of mess with time perspectives and going back and going forward and being mindful of what you've learned and using that to your advantage. It was fun to sit down with the developer. Tell me, Andy. A fast-paced Metroid Brainia ah! that tells the tale of a ruined society trapped in a fatal time loop. Uncover their story and your own as you explore what remains. Use each loop to chip away at the mystery, unlocking powerful knowledge to reshape the timeline and master the loop. This is from Moonlight Kids the developer. This is one of those games when I sat down and started playing it, you immediately understand, right? There was a time bar up at the top, and it's fun because you get to certain doors and you have to sacrifice your time to open up that doorway, right? So I would it's have just like that Justin Timberlake four minutes movie. on the clock where he would like yeah, rolls. Yeah. <laughs> <Social network. laughs> yeah. And I would have to sacrifice three minutes of my four minutes essentially to get through that door. So now I only had a minute and it started to slow down when I finally ran up and I was like, okay, loop one done. I'm on to the next one. And when he sat down and explained it, he's like, you know what to do. You just don't know yet. And it's like, oh, every loop I knew one step further to go. And then you unlock a glaive and you use that to be able to kind of move around the map in different ways that you might not have known at the beginning. And it's really cool to uncover these pieces over time and be like, oh, now I know what the next step is. I know where to go. This game seemed really freaking rad. And the moment I played it, I was like, my mind has been blown. I'm all about this now. And so keep an eye on this game. I think this is going to be pretty good here. I forgot who was sitting there playing it at the, that Xbox event. But when the developer walked over, the person sitting there was like, I've been here for like 30 minutes, man. I, like, <laughs> like, I hope that's a good thing. He was like, yeah, it is. Like this game is fantastic so far. Guys, thank you so much for joining me on another week of the Kind of Funny X-Cast. We brought you a bunch of indie titles that you need to know about from an awesome week over at GDC. The crew has a whole lot coming your way. Of course, we got reviews over on the Kind of Funny Games cast and PS I Love You XOXO. Me and my gaming dads will be back next week to talk Gary, all Gary, send Xbox. us a sign you're okay. That Mike's going to do something to you. <laughs> Gary comes and, back uh, with BBO. We'll have more fun. Thank you all so much for watching and tuning in. We'll catch you next week. Goodbye, everyone.